Hey, hello again. I'm out on Samish Island. It's north of Seattle. I'm up in this kind of island area near Anacortes in the Skagit Valley. I'm up here for the tulips. I'm gonna take part in a plein air Washington artist tulip paint out tomorrow. But I came up a day early just to check out some new spots. It looked like there were some pretty beaches on this Samish Island. This is a pretty view here. It's chilly in the shade. We've just had a beautiful April so far. Much warmer, much sunnier than what we normally get in April. Normally April is pretty rainy and pretty chilly. The average temperature in the mid 50s, but we're gonna hit probably 70, mid 70s this week. It's much cooler than that here in the shade with the breeze off the water. So I'm just walking along, enjoying the smell of the ocean, enjoying this beautiful weather, looking for a place to set up and do a quick plein air oil painting. I love these old beautiful trees that somehow find a way to survive in spite of tides and storms. Look how warped these trees are, stretching out from the cliff face, surviving somehow. As always, thanks for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. This is a beautiful secluded spot here. It's kind of sheltered from the wind. It's got that beautiful little promontory there. Looks like some madronas and some pines growing on that bright rock. I like how light and warm the water is there in the sun. I'm not sure how long that sun will last. Those vertical piles are kind of interesting as well. Neat mountains in the far distance, purple mountains. A lot to play with here in this location. I like the shadows on the beach as well, picking out some of the rocks. I may come back for this. Lots to choose from here. Beautiful place. Looks like the tide can come in all the way. I'm not exactly sure how high the tide's going to be tonight or when it's going to hit. Hopefully I, I don't end up wading back to the truck. That's a beautiful view there as well. That little promontory sticking out in front of that purple island, purple peak in the background. That tanker, that white ship out there, almost looks like a pirate ship or a some kind of tall sail ship. You could imagine back a few hundred years ago uh, one of those tall ships with their white, white sails rounding that little promontory. Well here's the scene I want to paint. 
It's got a really nice composition, that little peaceful cove, a little pool of water coming in, catching that sunlight. I'm not sure how long I'm going to have that sunlight. I walked around enough that it's getting to be a little bit later afternoon. I'm not sure how long the sun's going to last. So I want to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go with an 11 by 14 inch panel. I'll try to move quickly. I'll try to capture the shadow and sun pattern because I'm afraid that's going to change pretty quickly as the sun goes behind those trees. I'll go directly into a sketch using a small paintbrush and some burnt umber and just draw the composition quickly. I think I'll exaggerate those purple mountains in the distance a little bit. I really like how they stand out against that slightly greenish water in the distance. I don't think I'll capture the big ships out there. I think those are tankers. It may be fun to paint those in a little larger studio painting, but on an 11 by 14 they'd actually be pretty tiny. I want to zoom in as much as possible, catch this little sunny pool and the promontory there with the trees on it. I think I'll throw the foreground beach into mostly shade, a little bit of sun, and keep the sun on that far beach and on the water. Put in a rough sketch using a small brush and a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of alizarin crimson for that background, purple mountain. I'm going to just wash in uh, a little bit of cobalt blue for the sky and I'll make it a little bit warmer as it nears the horizon with a little bit of yellow. For that forested hill I'll use cad yellow because there's a lot of warm tones in it. For the far beach I'll use some of the Windsor lemon yellow. Then for the water I'll use burnt sienna. And then for the foreground rock I think I'll use a lizard and crimson. I want to throw it into shadow but I don't want to make it cold. I want it to be warm. With the turpentine wash I'm covering the white of the panel so it's easier for me to judge value but I'm also playing a little bit with the composition. And I'm just setting up some opportunity for happy accidents as well. Sometimes the wash goes down and it makes these neat patterns, these neat abstract shapes that I keep or I build on through the rest of the painting. So it's, it's a dynamic way to start a painting and it's kind of fun. There's the turpentine wash in now and I started to put in a little bit more paint just to establish a value pattern. I want the light on the beach on the far side of the little cove to be almost the lightest point. Maybe as light as the sky so it's sharing the same value as the sky and then go into shadow in the trees on that hill and shadow in the rocks on the bank and in the water. So now I'll mix up some colors real quickly. I'll mix up just a little bit of color for the sky to fill that in. I'll mix up some greens and browns for those trees. Some of the color of the sun hitting the water. So the light's changing really quick, which is what I was afraid of. So I wanna move pretty quickly here and just grab color notes if I have to. Lights fading really fast. Got a few colors mixed up for the sky and for that background mountain range. So I'll go ahead and paint those quickly with a large soft brush.
There's the sky and the purple mountains in the far background blocked in now. All right, a few more colors mixed up there. Got the colors for the background. Forested hill and the rocks on that beach and then a few of the, the watercolors. So I just want to jot those down quickly. I'm not going for detail here just to catch the big abstract shapes and to catch the color notes. I'll just use the sky colors that I mixed up earlier for some of the reflected light on the water. The reflected light on the water is darker than the sky and a little richer blue as well. I kind of use these videos as color notes for myself back when I'm in the studio and I'm finishing the painting up in the studio. way to spend the afternoon. Well, as you can see the light really changed. The sun sinks fast in April and it got chilly under the under the shade here. Luckily the breeze wasn't very strong. It's kind of sheltered here. Well, let me show you where I ended up on the painting. There's the finished painting. Really rough really went fast on it and didn't try to capture detail at all just big patches of color and I like it I like the abstract quality to it you've got that bright sunlight on the distant beach you've got kind of some electric lavender shadows there that I saw and wanted to capture and then this pine that's sticking out and it's in shadow. This foreground is really just scrubbed in quickly. I just wanted to capture how there's some light shining from the trees that are off to the left and then the shadows are really warm there with some big rocks that are silhouetted against that vibrant green water. So I'll take it back to my studio, take a look at it again, clean it up just a little bit. I want to add just a little more of the beautiful detail I'm seeing in the scene, especially those red bark. I think they're 
Madrona. Local to this area, just a beautiful tree. But I don't want to lose the, the abstract and the dynamic quality of the painting. I do like how that, how from a distance it, it really makes a statement. And as you get closer, you lose the detail. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe, share them with your friends, leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one.